Welcome ladies and gentlemen to a list dedicated to nothing but crappy pastas. What are crappy pastas exactly? Creepy pasta stories that are so bad, so broken, and so horrifyingly terrible that they just become adorable. Seriously, adorable. I can't even stay mad at them. They're too entertaining for that. Therefore, I thought I would give you people a few stories that made me laugh out loud due to them being either absurd, outlandish, or just plain silly. And don't worry, I will leave a link for each story in the description so you can check them out for yourselves in their unedited and unaltered glory. Believe me, you really should give these stories a read if you want to have a good laugh. And if my summaries are confusing, it's most likely because the stories are very confusing themselves. Most if not all grammar mistakes in this video will also be a result of how the stories are written. Yeah, most mistakes. With that said, strap yourselves in as we count down the top 10 funniest crappy pastas. Number 10. The WOMAN IN THE THEATER! In all caps. All caps because ooh. This story goes over how some random guy is having a theater show at some spooky theater where little children and workers have gone missing. As the show starts, the power cuts out. People in the theater, and I quote here, start searching the problem. After a few minutes, everything goes silent. Then, a light shines faintly, and the random guy and his friends see the shadow of a WOMAN, in all caps, approaching. But this wasn't a NORMAL woman, this was a TALL, grey-skinned woman, with a long blue dress and black hair. And of course, blood all over her. But worst of all, her eyes were plain white. Oh come on, that's not so bad. All you have to do is grow some spiky blue hair and you can become the lead singer in a band or something. Anyways, the random guy and his friends each hide in different spots and the woman finds one of them. She grabs him with her log hands <laughs> and takes him away. With blood all over the place, then she disappears. And then the power comes back on, and the blood is gone, and the random guy and his friends never returned to that place ever again. The end. Number 9. Apocalypse Dot Denied! So the main character in this story, Jamie Brox, accidentally manages to create a hellish computer file one day titled Apocalypse Dot Denied. Don't ask me why you named it that. So, surprise surprise, he can't open the file, because it's a DENIED file. So he sends it to a hacker friend of his, who decodes it, and tells him that the file is a picture of DEATH HIMSELF. Which means that the author accidentally created an image of DEATH HIMSELF. Interesting. How does his friend know that it's a picture of DEATH instantly? Who knows. His friend dies later that day, and the author assumes it's because of that picture. Now, the author can suddenly open the file, and he sees that it is indeed a picture of death. That night, he's plagued by terrible nightmares, and death asks him to spread the word, I mean show the picture to everyone. The story ends with the author being taken away and stuff. How riveting. All because of the accidental creation of a computer file. Ooh. Number 8. The Shadow on the Wall Not even 10 words into the story and there's already a tense swap. You're in for majestic storytelling, man. So the main character in this story wakes up and sees a quote-unquote zombie outside of his window. Of course, he's not frightened by this at all and thinks it's just someone in a bad costume because tension in this story is non-existent. A few minutes later, he feels a cold hand on his shoulder. Quick writing tip here, if you want to build a creepy atmosphere, it's important to not screw around. This story makes the mistake of switching the tone from light-hearted silly fun to dead serious horror far too quickly. If you want to make the reader feel as scared and as hopeless as possible, it's best not to add comic relief to a scene that is supposed to be for the explicit purpose of frightening the reader. Just a bit of constructive criticism, because even though I might appear as harsh in a few videos, let it be known that I have nothing against the authors of the stories I mention. Right, back to the story. 
He turns around, and no one is there. There's nothing but a note there. The note says, I am haunting you for eternity. You'll never know what or who I am. I am your worst nightmare. Now, turn around, pretty face. Pretty face? So the monster has a thing for the main character? That's actually kinda creepy. But then, we're back to silliness. The protagonist shrugs and turns around. That's not how you build atmosphere. The protagonist should be terrified and reluctantly turn around. That would make the reader feel some sort of dread. As it stands, it makes the whole thing seem like no big deal. Dang, I should probably stop giving advice or we'd be here the whole day. There, before him, is a strange dark figure on the wall. The shadow creature has a body oozing demonic blood. It also has a mouth full of razor-sharp teeth. Instead of feeling frightened though, our hero, that's the main character, laughs, believing the whole thing to be a prank. A very elaborate prank. The creature grows impatient and twists into an even worser being. Now our hero feels somewhat unsettled. He proclaims that he will not die on this day, and then he wakes up. It was all a dream. He looks out of his window once more and spots the same zombie. He looks behind him and finds another note that simply says, SHADOWS. He runs downstairs and calls his mother on the phone, but receives no response at first. Then he hears a dark, demonic voice. And I'm not reusing the same subjective twice, that's the story. The voice tells the author that he made the wrong choice. Was there even a choice? He then hears his mother scream as a chainsaw is heard. The call drops. The demonic voice is heard behind him. The monster is there and blindfolds our hero with a bandana and the sound of the chainsaw can be heard again. The story ends with this fantastic message. I scream for half a second, then close my eyes. That's a good girl. Those were the last words I heard. I quickly died without suffering. But I still have a few questions. Who was that? No, what was that? But most importantly, why was that? I will never know. Because I'm dead and I became skeleton and I wrote this. Number 7. Music Joy, My Friend. It was a late summer evening, and the prot you know what, I'll just call him Steve from now. Steve's brother, who was also called Steve, and Steve, that's our hero, was coming home after a day at the cinema. When they got home, there was something off about the brother. The next morning, Steve is woken up by their mother's scream. Their brother was hanging from the ceiling, dead. Steve swore that whoever had done this was going to pay. Question. How did Steve know their brother's death was someone else's fault? Perhaps he just took his own life. But alas, a man named Bradley Main, Steve's brother's bully, was the one responsible apparently. Steve grabbed a knife and told their mother that they wanted to kill. Her mother, terrified by her child's behavior, took them to a mental clinic where the staff, as the story puts it, brainwashed them to think that insanity was wrong and drugged them and made them the way society wanted them to be. A few months later, they were allowed to come home. Steve was outside in the forest and ran into a young girl. They seemed to be around the same age and Steve was captivated by her beautiful voice. Look at this sentence, just look at it! Aren't you the kid who committed suicide's brother? So Steve talked to the girl, who called herself Music Joy, who turned out to be rather sinister or whatever. The red paint-splattered headphones she was wearing, that's how the story puts it, were actually painted red with blood. And she does something to Steve that makes their world spin and they ran home or whatever, I don't really understand, it's very confusing. The next morning, Steve hears tapping on their window, and Music Joy was back. She threatens Steve with a knife, and they beg for their life. When Steve calls her a friend, she stops and leaves the house. A few days later, Steve goes into the woods, where he met Music Joy in the first place. There she was, together with Bradley Main, who was tied to a tree with duct tape. 
Steve then hanged Bradley and slit him open and blah 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 blah. They then laughed an evil laugh and understood how music felt, before running into the woods never to be seen again. How did they even write the story if they were never seen again? Number 6. Silent Scarlet So in this story, a 5-year-old girl sits in her room while her parents are having a fight, and her father goes upstairs, and well, you get it. Let's add in a bit of child abuse just cause, eh? This story sounds very familiar though, but I can't quite put my finger on what it's ripping off. Huh, I guess I suppressed that memory, eh? 13 years later, because apparently nothing interesting happened for 13 years in this girl's life, and nothing has changed. She once again sat in her room, and drew pictures of anime, gore, and whatever came to her mind. Anime, and gore. Right. She was homeschooled, since she had a hard time fitting in. Kids called her Silent Scarlet, for reasons left totally unexplained. Her little sister Lucy dies after her father leaves Lucy out in the freezing cold. Seems a bit drastic. After her sister dies, Scarlet goes into the bathroom, grabs a butter knife, and stabs it in her eye. Her mother comes in and rushes to a hospital. Some time passes, and Scarlet comes back with a missing eye. That night, she wakes up and has no control herself, and she heads into the basement and grabs an ice pick. She goes into her father's room, asks if he remembers her, which is a stupid question because of course a father remembers their own daughter, goddammit, and slams the ice pick into her father's face. Blood flies everywhere on her Eskimo jacket and bandages, which was two things never established before, and she jumps out the window and runs into the forest, where she is then met by a tall, faceless man who saves her from dying. Oh, you thought I made that last section up? Nope, that's in the goddamn story. Number 5. Burner. Hello said James to Kyle at school, sup Kyle responded. What a way to start your story. James and Kyle ran to class. When school was over, Kyle tripped James, causing him to fall in a pile of rocks. One of the rocks went through his skull, causing James mental issues. James's family had no other choice but to lock him up in a mental hospital, where he was kept for six years. Then, the place caught on fire, and James was horribly burned. His skin was now black, and one of his eyes were gone. He ran to a nearby house, and found a silver mask. How convenient. He also stole some clothes, and the man who lived in the house woke up. The man grabbed a screwdriver, and drilled four nails into each side of James's head. James, seemingly unaffected by this, grabbed the screwdriver, and drilled the man down to a chair. He saw lighter fluid, and a matches, which laid there conveniently. He cut a hole in the man's stomach and blah blah skip it. He walked out the door, leaving the man to die. By the way, call me Burner, he said, before walking away. The story ends with a stupid local news report that goes like this. Seven houses have burnt down to the ashes, killing 16 people. Also, a man covered in his own blood and burnt from the insides was found in his own house, nailed to a chair. And on the wall it said Burner, written in ashes, if you see a man named Burner, contact the Poils. Because this totally happened for real. Number 4. Bloodlust. Another stupid story that start with a stupid news article. Life. So fragile. So easy to destroy. That's how the main character, I'll call him Steve again, introduces his story. On one fateful day, something happened. Rich, who was one year older than Steve, was working to be a scientist and wanted some test subjects for an experiment. Steve agreed to be a part of it. To be part of a college student's lab experiment. You know, I'm starting to wonder how smart this guy really is. So once Steve came over to Rich's house, Rich knocks him out with a baseball bat. When Steve woke up, he was laying on a cold metal table. He found a mirror and was horrified. His left eye was gone and his right cheek was stitched. But worst of all, 
he had a cobra tattoo on his back. Steve understood that this must have been a sign a killer put on all his victims before death. Steve found Rich, who was a corpse now for whatever reason. Steve liked this, and now he kills people. After he began killing, he couldn't stop. Although, he urges the reader to avoid him, and call the police if you see him. Because apparently, he can't control himself. And that's bloodlust for ya. Truly an emotional roller coaster ride. Number 3. The Night of Halloween. I give up on trying to summarize these stories. It was the night of Halloween. Sarah had just moved it to a mansion with her family. She got this strange feeling, a feeling that began to worry her. She got a vision, a strange vision, a vision that was like she was possessed. She wasn't in pain or anything. She was worried because when she went to her room to unpack, she heard a screeching noise. Nobody was there. She went downstairs. Nobody was there. She was scared. It was 6 p.m. She got dressed for Halloween. Screech! She gasped. She yelled, Help! I'm haunted! <laughs> she went outside hoping to find someone. She found someone. Someone to know about her house. She just screamed. She screamed and screamed. Later that night, she had a dream. A dream that she was getting possessed by a demon or something. The next day, it was November 1st. She passed out. She woke up after two hours and found herself in a dark room and she heard Psycho laughing. She yelled, but nobody could hear her. The unknown person stabbed her in the stomach and she was never heard from again. Ooh. Number two, the intestine. You wake up not knowing where you are or what your name is. There is a sign saying, trust your intestine. Then an intestine drops from the ceiling from an open vent you could fit through, so you climb through which you will soon regret. Just when you think you escaped, you fall through an air vent into a pile of what you think is goo. Suddenly, the goo transforms into a goo monster. You back in out a wall and he gets closer and closer. Just as he opens his enormous foul smelling mouth, you hear a deafening screech and cover both your ears. A naked dog-like creature with wings flies into the room and attacks the blob and faces you and talks and whispers into your ear saying We are what you see when you die. We torture you, rip parts off you out and eat your soul. The only way to escape is to trust your intestine. The creature rips your intestine out, and then you wake up safe and sound in your room, but still don't remember who you are. You hear what you think is wind, but it gets heavier and heavier, until you cover your ears, and look at a table next to your bed, and see an intestine with a note saying, remember what I told you, and then you slowly fall asleep. The next day you ask your neighbors what your name is, and who you are. Your name is Joshua, your parents died in a car crash, and you live alone and work in the McDonald's from Monday to Friday, 11am to 6pm. You wonder how they know that much about you, and go back inside your house. That night you dream the same dream, but you remember who you were, and instead of ripping your intestine out, the creature brings an intestine and reus it open, and there is a note saying, I am coming tomorrow, so beware. <laughs> Oh, you continue the day normally and think a dream is just a dream, nothing's gonna happen, but at that moment the doorbell rings so you go to the curtain closer to the door and open it. You see the creature, but it was even more horrifying. He had red eyes, his flesh was ripped off, and his winds were broken. You ran up to your room and locked the door. Just then you remembered what the creature did. He broke the intestine, so with all your strength, you ripped open the intestine, but there were words saying, no way out. The creature knocked down the door and ripped your intestine out and said, go to sleep. You woke up with a fright and was relieved it was all just a dream, then you had a pain in the stomach. You look down and you find your stomach ripped open and your intestine gone, then you collapse and die. News report, boy of the name Joshua has died unexpectedly with no signs of damage. All his limbs are intact except his intestine which was found on his neck saying trust your intestine. Oh. 
Number one, Charlie the Killer. This is it, the one, the one that hurts me the most. I know I've already made a video about this one before, just like with the intestine and the night of Halloween, but damn, it's too much. Go watch that video if you want to hear me read this in its entirety. Charlie was a young girl who was bullied. She was obviously misunderstood and a really nice person if you would have just gotten to know her. She then started hearing voices on her head and decided to kill her bullies. She wanted to go do it again and, you guessed it, Jeff the Killer was her inspiration. She had beautiful eyes and brunette hair. But she started wearing dark makeup and dyed her hair black. One day, she met Jeff and the two fell in love instantly and crap. After dating for two years, Jeff decided it was time to pop the question. And they were supposed to get married. A week before the wedding, Charlie sat down at the bottom of her bed and cried. Jeff asked what was wrong, to which she replied, I'm pregnant! And Jeff responds with, Charlie, this is great news. The end. It's over. It's all over. What a load of bullsh. Captain Quark may be gone. Well, those were a select few crappy puzzle stories that amused me. Hope you enjoyed me slowly lose my sanity once more. I'm done for now, I'm going to bed. Thanks for watching, have a good day, stay awesome, good-bye.